Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapter is Jeremiah 40. Uh, yes, I'm only doing one today as we get ourselves back into sequence uh, in the reading plan. So verse 1 says that Jeremiah was found by the command of the imperial guard at Ramah, shackled, chained with the rest of the captives that have been taken into Babylon. Uh, what we're going to be reading today is a little bit of a history of the mop-up operation after the siege. So you've got in the open country some uh, you know, soldiers, some commanders of regiments that hadn't yet been rounded up by the Babylonians, plus a whole lot of poor people that have been left in the ruins that hadn't been deemed worthy to take into captivity. So there he is, Jeremiah, shackled with all the wealthy and the aristocracy, having been carted off to Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar said, find him. So the commander of the Lord God goes through all the exiles and finds him. And then this commander says to him, listen, the reason you're here is because your God did this, didn't he? Because you all sinned against him. He sent you into captivity. Sounds very much like he, he's familiar with Jeremiah's preaching. And today I'm freeing these chains from your wrists, he says in verse 4. And you can go wherever you like. Come with me. I'll look after you. Or it looks like Jeremiah must have been a little bit skeptical about that. You can go back to uh, Jerusalem. And there's a guy there called Gedaliah who's been put in charge. Now, he's not of the royal line. It's like Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm sick of the household of David. I've given a couple of guys a crack there. That hasn't worked. So I'm going to find an administrator, an admin guy who's going to look off. Look after my affairs out there, and he's going to be in charge of Jerusalem. And so uh, he gets a gift. He gets some provisions. And Jeremiah heads off back to Jerusalem and stayed among his people there with Gedaliah uh, in charge. Now, when all the army officers heard about this, they were living in the open country. They said to the men, come on, we've got a Jewish guy in charge of Jerusalem. Let's go back again. Gedaliah said to him, listen, you've got to put down your arms. You've got to be farmers now. Go reap the crop. Melt it among the, the, the civilians and you'll be fine, which is what they do. Don't be afraid of the Babylonians. Settle down. He'll be king for you. Then when the Jews that had uh, emigrated to Moab and Ammon and Eden heard that uh, he was there, they, they also decided, well, let's come back from these foreign lands. and Maybe we can rebuild. But you, you'll see in later history accounts of what went on there, that they were really a remnant living among the ruins. Anyway, there came a message to uh, Gedalia that uh, one of the royal princes, his name was Ishmael, had got the zig with what had gone on. And I think because they had bypassed the royal family, he was of the line of David. So 2 Kings 25, the account of Gedalia here, makes it clear that he was one of David's uh, descendants, uh, was rumored to be wanting to take out Gedalia. But now, Gedalia, he, he's not a military man. He, he's not into politics. He's an administrator. And he doesn't, much to his his downfall, he, he, he doesn't believe that this royal prince would actually do that. And uh, we'll read what happens uh, tomorrow about it. So I suppose as I draw today's chapter to a close, the question is, um, you might be thinking, why does God allow the Babylonians to do this stuff to his people? I mean, surely there's other ways that God could have done this. As flawed, sinful people, uh, it's crazy for us to look up into heaven and say, God, we think we've got a better way for you to do it. He, he would be totally justified and just leaving up to our, us to our own devices. And we would, quite frankly, kill each other. If, if sin was just given its absolute reign over all our lives, we would self-destruct. Now, God intervenes from time to time. And every time he does, just like he did there with uh, Jeremiah, and just how he did there with the, the army officers that were in the hill country, just how he did with the poor, every time he intervenes, it's him showing mercy. He doesn't need to show it to anybody, but he does. And so... I'm going to end today just praying for God's mercy into various situations. And obviously, the, the greatest act of His mercy is sending Jesus, which makes salvation possible to everyone who would come to Him.